Welcome to the shop. I'm continuing to make parts for Inquala Production Run 4. 750 parts and I'm getting close to the end. I'm going to be doing the last two aluminum parts, uh, starting out with the large heat shield. And these will be made out of a uh, 16th inch thick aluminum sheet. And I get to make all 10 at one time, so this is going to go pretty fast. So I've got the bridge port set up using the Heimer indicator, and I've set my standard zero at the left rear corner. Then I cut the blanks on the table saw, and it's not very interesting. I didn't show that on camera. Um, it, partly because it's not very interesting and partly because I don't want to have to take the camera over to the table saw. So the first thing I'm going to do is clamp them all together in the vise with the appropriate size parallel and drill some holes. And get them all lined up. The blanks are oversized, and so it's, they don't have to be like totally, totally precise. But uh, actually, let me check something here. I'm using the little stop held in place by hand to get all the left corners approximately correct. I'm going to get a little clamp just to give a little extra security since even though they were cut on the table saw with the fence and the table saw cuts pretty accurately, I can't completely depend on the pieces all staying together, just being clamped on edge. I'm going to load up the drill bit. And actually, I'm going to use this one. And just verify that and I have no interference with my clamp. And I'm going to drill some holes. Crank up the speed. Peck, peck, peck. to the next. Ten holes. So now that I've got my holes, I'm going to probably do a, a little bit of deburring here. I've got a 
a clamping fixture that uses these holes. Here it is. And this holds the pieces in place to mill the perimeter, the profile. And yeah, boy, this, this goes fast. very, very close to having completed all of the parts. And let me make absolutely sure here that I'm not going to yeah, not going to run the run off the edge here. Actually, what I think I'm going to do, just for a little, I, I think I can get away with this, but just for that little extra bit of safety, and it's kind of odd. I usually usually put a, a chamfer on the zero point. I'm going to go ahead and reset the zero using the Heimer indicator to give myself a little bit more safety margin. Because I was getting pretty close to the travel limit. And it's so fast to set the zero with the Heimer. Might as well. So. Get the old screwsels in. Sure, the screws goes through all the aluminum plates. Tighten it down. Since the top of the fixture is the same size as the finished part, I've got the pieces of thin sheet metal pretty nicely constrained here. So not going to have any problem. I'm going to go ahead and set the zero on the surface of the vice jaws so I know 
I'm not going to get in trouble running into the vice jaws. And one of the nice things about the CNC bridge port is that I can do a kind of a dry run with the z-axis retracted and just make sure. I mean, this is an old tool path that I've run many times, and there's very little chance that it's bad. But it's just a kind of a nice little sanity check. I'm just manually increasing the feed rate using the, the Mach 3 control panel so I don't have to stand here all day and watch it. But it's just nice to have a little, a little bit more confidence that, yes, in fact, it is following the correct path. I'd hate to mess up uh, 10 parts at the same time because I got the tool path wrong. Okay, back down to my normal speed. inches per minute. On the outside perimeter, I could probably go a lot faster. I could probably go 100 inches per minute. But when it gets into the middle, I'm a little bit concerned with chip evacuation. And hey, I get the whole batch done in one operation, so it doesn't bother me at all to go a little bit slow on this. a little bit and then back down back down to the program feed as I get into the potentially troublesome part I don't have flood coolant on the bridge port and the mist coolant doesn't have the same ability to evacuate ships, but I think I'm okay. Give it a little bit of a helping hand with Mr. Air Nozzle. the feed rate a little bit on the perimeter.
The bridge port is a lot more rigid than the Tormach. And except for my concern about ship evacuation, I could take some pretty honking cuts with this guy. Super good visibility. Just checking to make sure I've got enough clearance between the collet and those hold down screws and the top of the of the fixture. Make sure I've got enough tool stick out and it appears that I do. This will be the final task. Finishing all ten parts in one operation. Boy, oh boy, this is the most production that I get in this process. Uh-oh. Coolant looks like it's uh, petering out. I might have to try finishing this guy with the with the air hose. it. Ten happy little parts. And I hit them with the Scotch Brite. Try to get rid of some of the damage on the surface. Unfortunately, my metal supplier doesn't treat the the metal stock with the respect I think it deserves and so every time I buy a a new sheet of material it always comes in scratched up and so end up having to go over to the Scotch Brite and fix it up So, screwing, screwing, screwing. And here we are, 10 very nicely made, large in koala heat shields batch operation. It don't get no better than that.
So continuing with the batch operation, I'm going to do another little part, really little, also doing 10 at a time, and these are little conduit guides. The conduit running on the Inquala is a bit of a trick. It was a bit of a trick to figure it out and make it work because conduit doesn't like to bend in the kind of complex angles that the Inquala moves through. So I had to come up with a kind of clever way of doing the conduit routing and one of the things that I had to do is make this little piece of aluminum that just gives the conduit that little extra nudge just to kind of make sure it gets with the program and stays where it's supposed to be and doesn't go all crazy. Kinky is good for some things, but not for Mr. Conduit. So, back into manual mode. It is so nice that the bridge port has full manual mode. You turn the servos off, and it's a manual mill. Feels just like a manual mill. So, got to reset the controller when I do manual operation. Move back to the zero point just to make sure the zero is reasonable. And then, got all of the little blanks were cut on the table saw. Off camera. Put Mr. Drill Bit back in. <laughs> Same process as before, just smaller. And do just a quick sanity check to see, yep, that does not look insane. And That is absolutely wrong. I'm going to go refill the coolant bottle and try to figure out what's wrong with my tool pass, and I'll be back. I'm using the bridge port today because the Tormach is set up for the rapid turn and for this kind of work, the bridge port is just as fast and it works really well. But the toolpath I loaded was a Tormach toolpath, which is not correct. And it would have caused me much pain and failure if I hadn't noticed it. So I think I'm happy now. If there's two things I hate, it's pain and failure. Hold down the top one with a, a screwdriver, just in case the top one was the 
a couple of thou undersized, and it decides that it doesn't want to be part of a party anymore. Missing a hole. Where's my second hole? Ah, good old Bobcad. I changed the post processor without changing anything else, and it kind of forgets where the hole geometry is and then disables the ability to pick it again, so I had to close the file and load it. Still isn't right. Oh. There we go. going here. The original toolpath was for the Tormach and it had a peck drill cycle and the Bridgeport doesn't peck drill. So, so many ways. This is a, a little part, but you know, even the little ones, they're all necessary. Can't build an Inqualo without them. Now, I gotta make sure I have the, the right cutter diameter too. Three-eighths. I like using the three-eighths cutter for aluminum, the three-eighths three-flute. The quarter-inch cutter, I only use the quarter-inch cutter when, when I really need the tight inside radius because ship clearance, ship evacuation is a lot bigger problem. So once again, I'm gonna do my sanity check with the cutter retracted so it doesn't hit one of those mounting screws. And it's not wrong, but it's not right.
Okay, so much for that. The original tool path that I made was for the Tormach, where it had a roughing end to finishing operation, using the 3 8 for roughing and the quarter for finishing. So, after having said how much I don't like quarter inch tools, I think I can make it work. I think it'll be just fine. It's a small part. Gonna move conservative, take a small cut. Hope I don't get in trouble. Hope I don't break the cutter. Yeah, that's looking sane. good chip evacuation, there's really no problem using a quarter-inch cutter. And at least on this side, I have great visibility. the only potentially tricky area. And then the back is potentially tricky too. Didn't break the cutter, but it did load up. So, chip evacuation. Taking a very shallow cut. 
And I'll write this problem down so I remember it. But I think I see what's going on. The little pieces of sheet aluminum are curling up as they cut and getting caught in the cutter. Looks like I will successfully conclude this project. But wow, that's a lot of trouble. trouble for a part that I thought was going to be simple. So I'm using the screwdriver to hold down the piece that's being cut. So it doesn't curl up and wedge itself into the cutter. what's going on this this may be not exactly sure this might be like really gummy aluminum or something but that was almost no depth of cut with really really good cooling and everything under control and the cutter loaded up so oh, it's never easy the next little part is a fairly annoying little guy to make. It starts out with a piece of half by half cold rolled steel that's cut to length on the chop saw and then kind of roughly finished on the end with the disc sander. And no, I didn't show that operation. Uh, most of it gets cut away and there's very little left to actually grip on and it's steel and it's a kind of a pain in the ass, but it is necessary to provide the magnetic uh, attachment so that when you move the clamp up on the clamp bar, it sticks at the top, which turns out to be a fairly useful thing. I've already, because I am tired of fumbling around on camera, I've already done some of the prep work ahead of time, so hopefully it's going to go good, but hey, it's steel, and so the first thing I'm going to be cutting on the end, I've got the part on parallels up against the reference point, and I'm going to be cutting a profile into the end about a hundred thousandths deep probably, I don't know, 110 or something just to have a little extra. I put a, another piece over here that I'm not going to be milling just to equalize the force on the two sides of the vise. And it's not a very interesting profile, but hey, it's got to be done. Even a quarter inch 
solid carbide for float running at five inches per minute. I'm going to go to 110 thousandths here. And it was cut successfully. So there's what the end profile looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and run the, the batch and then turn the camera back on for the next exciting operation. Okay. So there's always a question that arises when using the bridge port. Should I keep the part in the vise and change tools, or do all the mill operations, then put in the drill and do all the drill operations? I'm still a bit uncertain as to what's the really the best answer, but for today, doing all the mill first, followed by the drill. And boy, is it ever exciting. It's one whole hole. One each hole. Not even that deep. Wow. The hole, the hole, hole, and nothing but the hole. So help me hole. There we go. Profile and hole. So going to run the batch. The first and second operations are complete. And now I'm going to be doing the third operation. Boy, this, for such a little part, this guy has a, a lot of stuff going on. So, It's going to be manually feeding in 150,000. Going to take it all in one pass, five inches per minute. Carefully looking at the DRO so I don't overshoot. There we go. Three eighths diameter, four flute, solid carbide end mill running at 2800 RPM. And that is what that looks like. So here we have the next step in the process. And now I'm just going to run the batch and then be back again for the next operation. Okay, I'm ready for the fourth and final operation, which is, this one always makes me a little bit nervous. I, I'm trying to grip the little guy, <laughs> grip it between these, you see it on the camera, grip it right there. And the parallels that I have, the combination of parallels that I have gives a very small amount of gripping surface. So, and I'm taking off a lot of metal, so I better be careful. Careful, slow, conservative, and I certainly don't want this part jumping out of the vise. Once again, I've got matching parts on both sides to equalize the force. Cranked it down, but good. And I'm gonna just try to see if I can avoid breaking things. Half inch cutter, solid carbide, three flute, 2800 RPM.
And yeah, this would be easier on the Bridgeport, but Bridgeport is currently busy. Got that rapid turn on it. And I sure don't want to set that guy up again anytime soon. So I'm just going slow. Slow and steady. And yeah, this is gonna this is gonna take a while. my final depth of 350. I'm taking 50,000 passes. I originally tried a 100,000 pass and that's just a little, little too aggressive. Okay, well, except for a little deburring action, let me check that tool path to make sure everything's okay. It, uh, it looks like I'm missing a little bit here. Need to go a little bit further outside the periphery of the part. This is a a new part that was just introduced in version 2.2. So that is what I'm making. So I'm going to go back and modify my tool path a bit because it looks like that radius is I'm not quite getting all the way to the end. I don't think it's a burr. I think it's actually a tool pass that needs to go just a few more thousands. So once these little guys are done, I've got one more part to make, and that's the horizontal main axle, which will be drilled and tapped on the manual lathe, turned on the rapid turn, then uh, drilled perpendicular on the bridge port, and when that guy is done, it's off to plating and anodizing. Ooh-wee! Nice to be getting close to done. So, thanks for watching. It's been kind of fun, you know, kind of troublesome, but, you know, that's, that's life in the machine shop.